Hello, Becca Armstrong here. I am so excited to be connecting with you here today in our Unstuck and Unstoppable series. Previously, we talked about how your self-identity formulated between the third trimester in utero and seven years old has contributed to you being stuck. However, your stuck coming from the formation of your self-identity comes from those that you were in the environment of before you were seven. So whatever you experienced that was repeated or emotionalized impacted you emotionally that contributed to the formation of your self-identity and likely to what has you stuck right here and now. So today we're going further because we are going to get into the core foundation of your self-identity. And what I've discovered is most often missing that is a huge, maybe the factors uh, that have people stuck. So let's get going. All right, let's do a little bit of a review. What is your self-identity. Your self-identity is the wholeness of you. It starts in its formation in the third trimester in utero, and it continues all the way, uh, like having the record button on, until you're about seven years old. It completes its uh, fundamental uh, development by the time you're 10, and then you are in a record or you're in a play button. So your life is playing through your self-identity from that moment. Now, what consists of your self-identity? First off, you have your definitions, your definition of self, your definition of the world, and your definitions of the world and you in connection and communication. This brings forward your perceptions, what you see as well as you, what you don't see. You have something called a reticular activating system that is really awesome because it helps you to prioritize and filter information based on you. So perception, what you see and what you don't see. Uh, the next factor or criteria of your self-identity are your beliefs and your belief systems. Next, you have your emotions, your emotion codes, your patterns of emotion. Now, we spoke about that 98% of your emotions are part of your self-identity that was wired and encoded by the time you were seven. Next, we have thoughts. On average, a person such as yourself will go through and experience 70,000 independent thoughts every day. Now, 66,000 500 of those on average are automated patterned thoughts that are part of your self-identity. So this means that 95% of your thoughts are not yours. 5% of your thoughts are now and they're outside of the automated self uh, and 2% of your emotions are part of the non-automated self-identity. Okay, so let's go further because your thoughts and your emotions combine and they are expressed in your body, and that's what becomes and is the expression of a feeling. So a feeling, feeling good, feeling bad are actually two primary feelings, and we're gonna talk more about those in upcoming episodes. From feelings, you now then, because your body has been influenced, if your body is now the expression vehicle, you are now going to engage in behaviors. Behaviors. The majority of your behaviors are automated. They're part of your self-identity system. Next, you have actions or reactions, okay? Again, automation. So this turns into your habits and patterns, the things that you do without thinking about it. When you wake up in the morning, what do you do right away that you do without thinking about it? When you get in the car, where do your hands go? Do they go up here to engage the car into gear or do they go down here onto the console area? Automated habits and patterns. And this becomes the self-identity, which is about 95% of everything you think, feel, say, perceive, don't perceive, and do throughout your day. Okay, again, your subconscious, which is the record element of you that all of these automations are now stored and running in, is not discerning. It's not gonna say, that's a really good one. That's a really bad one. Yeah, I like that perception. That one feels really good. That one actually I think is gonna create some challenges. This one is solid. This one is weak. It doesn't do that. Whatever's repeated and emotionalized, 
that becomes an integrated part of your self identity. So what happens next? Well, you go into the world and I want you to think of yourself utilizing the metaphor of a house. Okay. Turn yourself into a house. Houses, especially the houses that you build up and they have multiple stories and many, many floors. The stronger the foundation, the stronger the structure of the home will be. So we're turning our attention not to what you can see, but we're going to the, the core foundation of your self-identity. And after working with, oh my goodness, tens of thousands of people uh, globally, I've discovered that there are four aspects of everyone's core foundation of the self. Now, this started off with testing over 70 emotion codes and, and different energy sequences. And by energy, I'm talking about your thought sequences. We can measure your thought with electrical impulses. We can measure your emotions with magnetic frequency and impulses. So in testing over 70, we discovered there are only four. And when you have these four as a part of your core foundation of self, you are unstoppable and you do not get stuck. When you are either missing some of these core foundations, even just one of them, maybe you're not missing it entirely, but it's only partially integrated into your core foundation of self, or maybe it's there, but it's under or undeveloped. This will all cause stuckness. I don't think that's a word, but we're going to make it a word here and now, okay? So the core foundations are, number one, love. Now, this is not conditional love. This isn't I love myself because. This is I love myself completely. And if we're going to tag a because in there, it's because you are. It's because you're blinking. It's because you're breathing. I love myself completely. That's the first one. The next one I discovered is... I, I am safe being me. Okay, so this isn't I'm safe in this room, I'm safe in my life, I'm safe in my job, I'm safe in my relationship. Those are conditions. This is I am safe being the entirety and the truth of who I am. I am safe being me. Okay, number two. The third one I discovered is I totally trust myself. I totally trust myself. So if someone says that's the wrong way, you trust your inner guidance. You trust yourself. So if it feels like that is an accurate uh, response or guidance, you roll with that. If something's off to you, you roll with that. If people say you're a great person and you feel like, you're not living in your truth or you're not um, acting in integrity or somebody saying you're a terrible person and you feel like you're being in your truth, you are asserting your necessary boundaries, uh, then you're going to say, I appreciate how you feel. Thank you for the feedback. And I know it's true for me. So it allows you to really be discerning and to actually know what your truth is and to stand in it. So this, these, these things move you outside of your ego, and we're going to go deep into actually what happens when you have these part of your core foundation. Now, I said that there are four. We've only spoken about three. Here's the fourth one. I claim, own, and stand in my power in every moment and in every experience. Yes, I claim, I own, and I stand in my power in every moment and in every experience. Okay, so love. Safe, trust, power. That is your core foundation. And again, when it's not there, okay, it's partially there, but incomplete, or it's complete, but it's undeveloped or underdeveloped, your structure of self is going to wobble. It's going to wobble. Your self security, your uh, clarity, your discernment is going to wobble. Your self-esteem, your self-efficacy is going to wobble. And you are likely to be increased in your dependency on the opinions, the feedback of others. Okay. And not really knowing 
where your own inner compass is and how to navigate your path from your truth. That's how big these are. Now, you cannot talk them into being. You can't say, okay, I'm going to walk around and I'm going to repeat, I, I love myself completely. I love myself completely. I love myself completely. You can't actually do that because remember, 95% of everything you think, feel, say, and do is automated. So you're going to walk around and you're going to repeat because repetition does eventually hit the record button. But you'll repeat, I love myself completely. I love myself completely. I love myself completely. And then you'll remember, oh my gosh, I was supposed to pick up the mail for my neighbor and I didn't do it. Oh, judgment, criticism. I no longer love myself completely because I can only love myself completely if I picked up the mail. That is what tends to happen because you haven't shifted it at a subconscious level in your self-identity yet. So the moment something happens that takes you into an automated experience, something that you've had before, maybe you you forgot something, you didn't do something perfectly, uh, someone's upset with you, you're upset with you, it'll, it'll engage the absence the wobble, the missing, the under or undeveloped aspect of this core foundation. So you've got to hit the record button by going to the subconscious and getting into a theta wave. Now, I discovered a technique. Originally, I was trained in, and I am trained in, counseling clinical hypnotherapy, which is phenomenal. And it's a great way to move into a theta wave and hit that record button. It can take minutes. Okay, it can take an hour. It is an experience on the inner level in the theta wave. I did discover a technique between 30 seconds and 15 minutes that allows us to hit the record button and not only integrate, download into your core foundation whatever's been missing, but run the energy through it and strengthen it as though it has always been there. Now, remember, we spoke about in the previous episode that if you are missing something from the self-identity, it isn't because the environment held held back or your subconscious said, eh, I'm not going to I'm not going to integrate those. You don't have it in your self-identity because it wasn't in your environment. It's like if you plant carrots in soil that are deplete and don't have the nutrients, then the carrot will grow and won't have that particular uh, nutrient, mineral, mineral, whatever it is. So it's not that people were doing you wrong in your self-identity development. You got the best of what they had to offer. How do you know that? It's because it is what they were emotionalizing or what they were repeating. Now, I want to really be clear about this because trauma is absolutely valid. It matters and it's not okay. So if you were in a violent, abusive, hurtful environment growing up, it is not okay and your wounds matter. So when I say it's the best that they had, I'm not ever saying that they couldn't have done better, they needed to do better, and that your wounds need to be validated and healed. What I am saying is these patterns repeat. And they are past. We used to think genetically. It is more now that we know it's epigenetics. Okay, so environmental influence. And what we grow up in tends to be what we repeat. Now, again, sometimes we can download and integrate a part of ourself, self-identity, that is the opposite faculty. So let's say you grew up in an environment where the adults did not like vegetables. And you saw them talk about how much they don't like vegetables and how much you w- they wish they were healthier and how much they liked vegetables and how much they wish they had just eaten them growing up and learned to like them because they would be healthier as an adult. And so you may not have liked vegetables either, but you might have made a decision saying, OK, what feels better emotional impact is to eat the vegetable. Because I want to do something that is the opposite of what I'm seeing. So the impact was emotionally do the opposite. The opposite is better. So you did the opposite repeatedly as a kiddo. Now you have that as the part of the self. So you might be the one person in your family that likes vegetables and prefers them over the other things on the plate. That's a part of the way in which the self-identity is formulated. So yes, it is unique to you, 
but you are downloading and encoding, wiring, and strengthening between the third trimester and seven years old. Okay, so you've got to get into that theta wave and hit the record button. Uh, and what, what uh, happens when you hit the record button is that you integrate and you shim up your foundation. Now think about it just like the metaphor of a house, the analogy of a house. It, the stronger your foundation is, the more stable it becomes, and everything that's built on top of it continues the continuity of that stability, that strength, that structure. And the further you can reach up and out. Now, your core foundation is not beyond plasticity. It is plastid because not only can you hit the record button and integrate all of the missing elements of it and strengthen them as though they've always been there for you, you can also continue to expand your core foundation along a lifetime. So imagine you've got a, a, a thousand square foot house. That requires a particular foundation. Now, if you wanna turn that into uh, a 10,000 square, square foot house, you're gonna to wanna to expand that foundation so it can support the structure upon which uh, you know, you're putting on top of that core foundation. So as you go and as you expand and as you grow, you are designed to be unstoppable because you're designed to integrate, integrate, expand, expand, allowing that core foundation to continue to meet you in life wherever you're at. And you might say, well, that sounds like a lot of work. No, once you have your core foundation there, as you move and as you reach and as you grow, your core foundation moves and it grows with you. Now I'm gonna switch the analogy from a house to a root system that belongs to a tree. As those branches reach out, 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 expand, grow, define, leaves, all of these things, as this tree becomes huge and magnificent, the root system is developing to support everything that that uh, tree is expanding into so that it is fully supported, thriving and nourished in every moment and never has to back down from growing because that's how you are built too. All right, so uh, if you are interested in this cool integration technique, 30 seconds to 15 minutes, check my bio, check the uh, information that's coming along with this material. It'll, it'll give you lots of different uh, options for reaching out to me, and I'm happy to share with you different ways in which you can learn to do that. All right, in the next episode, we're going deeper into the core foundation, and I'm gonna show you the magic and what happens when you actually love yourself completely free of external influence and condition. Oh my gosh, if you're looking for a magic wand, the truth is you're the magic wand. And I'm excited in the upcoming episodes to show you how you can really thrive, get unstuck and be unstoppable by being you and coming into your wholeness. All right, Becca Armstrong, thank you so much for joining me and I look forward to seeing you soon. Take good care.